Um, I just apologize for not being able to be here uh, today. Um, and also I need to say that uh, even if we discussed extensively uh, everything that I'm going to talk about today with Alice, uh, she didn't have the opportunity to review this presentation, so uh, she cannot be responsible for any of my shortcomings. Um, we took the opportunity of, the, of this workshop to, to, to start by discussing her and I about, about the, 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 the issues related to the, to the microliths and microlithism in, in the Horn of Africa. Um, and I'm, I'm going mostly to, to, to raise points we can discuss, and I, actually most of them uh, have been discussed uh, already. Uh, so I'm, I'm not do, going to, to, to talk long about the thing that there is a wide range of definitions of microliths across the world, but particularly in Africa. And uh, as of today, uh, things as different as um, um, the artifacts on the left picture and some of the, of, of the ones on the, on the right one are, are called the same way and, of course, uh, doesn't necessarily correspond to the same reality, the same archaeological reality. And um, we, we discussed, I mean, Stan, Stanley and, uh, and, and Stephen discussed a, a bit about that uh, this morning. For those who are not familiar with, with East, East Africa, here yeah, I refer to Eastern, Eastern Africa as the association of East Africa and, and the Horn of Africa. Uh, there is a particular research background uh, with um, a fundamental, I mean, uh, um, a seminal work uh, conducted by, uh, by Louis and Marie Leakey. And the publication in 1943 of the Irex Hill Industry by uh, Mary Leakey, where she proposed to use the same term, crescent, to describe small and large backed pieces because there was a continuum between them and there was no way to differenti differentiate them. And this, um, this definition uh, remained in use and um, during later works and, uh, and became an, an element of definition. For instance, here, um, during the, by Nelson um, in his PhD. Um, uh, I'm like <coughs> you, can, you can read it, but... Um, um, since then, in, in the region and during later work, uh, microliths um, um, describe why use the term microlith were used to, to, to describe small and large backed pieces. To us, uh, this uh, poses several problems. Um, we need to, 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 to differentiate the, um, the backing from the microlithism uh, in, 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 in general, uh, whatever the, the reasons can be for, for, uh, for uh, the miniaturization of the artifacts. But uh, we are dealing here with two archaeological realities. The, the, the backing itself relates to the hafting, while um, the miniaturization of the, of the artifacts um, uh, is not necessarily linked to the, to, to the hafting. Uh, this is my definition, I mean our definition, because we have slight differences between, but this is our definition of what could be a microlith, what would be a microlith, something small because of its name and something retouched. Um, but uh, I think everybody here agrees that because of the terminological problems we have, uh, we need every time we use the word to say what we are talking about. Uh, until we reach a consensus, which hopefully will arrive one day, but until we reach a consensus, we, we have to be specific about what we are talking about. Um, then, to us, a microlith is something small. I need to keep the time. Uh, it's something small. Sometimes it's obvious, but sometimes it's not. Um, Justin discussed about that already this morning, uh, and some others. Uh, but we believe that um, it's important to um, to. Um, to <coughs> to discriminate the, the, the microliths from larger uh, retouched and backed tools uh, within assemblages themselves and within industries themselves. Um, and this is just an example to show that uh, various methods exist 
uh, some very simple, which is um, um, what Alice did during her PhD and the uh, recent papers, which is looking at a biplot and uh, trying to see groups, and something much more sophisticated, which is a, a cluster analysis, which was conducted uh, thanks to, uh, to some code that you gave me and that um, you can find the reference in, in a paper you pu just published with Marina Ronondo uh, this year. Uh, and you see that they are very different. I mean, the, the, the grounds for the, the, the methods are very different, but at the end, uh, with something very empirical and something very sophisticated, we can end up with similar uh, conclusions. We also discussed this morning about microlithic assemblages. Uh, and um, I'm not going to, to tell much because uh, actually this is, I think, your point number two of the four points this morning. But uh, here it's for the assemblages and not for the microliths themselves. Um, the, the key to us is to identify the, the, the international intentionality of, of small uh, tool production. Then, um, <coughs> to the, to just very briefly, uh, before discussing the, 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 the microliths of, of the Horn of Africa, for the ones who are not familiar at all with the context, uh, and to say it very quickly, uh, it's a huge area with a scarce ar archaeological record. And uh, for large parts of the region, uh, what we know comes from a uh, book conducted, uh, from work conducted a long time ago. I put here the covers of, um, of the seminal work by uh, Desmond Clark and Paolo Graziosi uh, in, in Somalia, uh, respectively in the, um, the 40s and the 30s. I put them in the wrong order, sorry. Um, what is interesting is um, they describe the collections uh, without putting much emphasis on the microliths at that time. Um, in comparison, at least, to other contexts. And as a result, uh, we don't have in the Horn of Africa, and I think it's true for, 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 for Eastern Africa as a whole, we don't have a sophisticated typology like we can have in some regions, and, uh, and the best example is uh, the Tixi typology in, in North Africa, I think. So, um, we have, we have different views and different um, definitions of, of the same, the same uh, elemental, elementary work relating to microliths. And on the end, we don't have a detailed uh, vocabulary that would uh, still allow us to understand what we are talking about. And this is confusing. Um, just to... Yeah, this is exactly what I'm, what I'm talking about. This um, after this 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 work uh, on, on on index fossils made by uh, by, by by Clark or, or Gatiosi, uh, there were attempts of using the microliths and the microlithism as um, an indicator of technical change and thus cultural change. Um, but as we think, uh, big of these categories. Um, can overlap sometimes and are not uh, accepted by everyone, we could, um, we could read something different from, uh, from, um, from, the, from, the same, from the same figures. I really need to go faster. Um, I'm just going to present two uh, main contexts. Uh, one I have uh, analyzed for, for, my, for my PhD and one uh, Alice analyzed for her. Um, the Bulbula River uh, within the, the Ziwai Shala Basin, uh, Central Main Ethiopian Rift. Uh, to oversimplify, uh, we have three, uh, so it's, uh, there are three windows of preservations uh, identified in that area, one from late MIS3, late National and early Holocene, uh, with the average dates. <coughs> and which is very interesting is when, when, we, when, we, when, we, when we think about, about the, the terminological and the background and the, and the, and the state of the research, uh, we are able to, to identify a much complex reality with industries without microliths, with, with our definitions. Uh, the emergence of microliths very late in the record, and interestingly, in, 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 in low 
proportion co compared to unretouched bladelets. And in association with backed, large backed pieces. As a matter of fact here, there is no continuum between small and large. And also a much more complex viability of uh, small backed or not um, curved backed uh, microlithic solutions. Um, this is a work conducted by Alice on the, on the Gouda Buticha shelter uh, at the edge of the Somali plateau in uh, eastern Ethiopia. Uh, to summarize, uh, the, the, the filling of the shelter was divided in three main units, one dated between 63 and 25, one between uh, 8,000 and 6,000, and one very recent. Uh, you have this here. And again, uh, there were uh, almost no microliths in the, in, the, in the oldest deposits. And they, and, they, and, 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 they, and they share a large, they, they have a large share in, in, the, in the much younger uh, Holocene deposits. Um, this, is, this is not very clear, and, uh, and I apologize, but uh, what we want to, to show is uh, there is a great vi regional viability that has been um, masked by, uh, by a lack of research primarily, but also because of uh, the use, the fluctuating use uh, and changing use of, of different terms. And this viability needs to be described. Um, but <coughs> we have interesting patterns that do not fit with the existing terminology. For instance, I mean, that fit with the terminology we use, but some here wouldn't agree with us. On use, uh, but um, if we consider uh, the geometrics themselves, they are actually very late. So all the, re the, the, the terminology related to, uh, to, to lunate actually doesn't fit. And if we try to put this in pattern, uh, this is what I, what I was saying, um, we, we see the existence of a great viability. Um, which is actually uh, related to other, other changes within the technical systems. And this is, I think, some, something that uh, Latifa stressed earlier, is uh, these microlits are, are part of the, tech, the world technical system and, um, and they are the, um, the expression of, of a global change. And this is, um, if, if I go back to, to, the, to the broader discussion of, uh, of today, uh, and if, if, if there is another uh, specific point that we would like to, to discuss, and, and this is the, the title of our paper, is um, the difference between um, microlith and microlithic assemblage in this context, in this regional context. Uh, there are uh, many occurrences, uh, sometimes very early in uh, so-called MSC assemblages uh, of, of microliths, of isolated microliths in, 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 in small proportions. And, um, and this can be different of processes like the, 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 the microlithization uh, like, and, and could have a different significance, like for instance, the, the, the development of bladelet uh, technologies uh, later uh, during the late Pleistocene and the Holocene. And uh, that's all. I'm sorry if it's not very clear. Steve? Then what do you recommend that we do? <laughs> it was unclear. You recognize the problems, but how do we solve them? I recommend we, we agree. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day. <laughs> So to be clear, your, your definition in operation here is small and retouched tools as defined using a contextual approach to size. It's no. what, microlith? No, the, um, 
not uh, no. What so what is your in a, in a in a two sentence? What is your definition of microlitzia? Uh, a small um, internet, a small internet, intentional uh, retouched <coughs> artifacts. Okay. But yeah. all uh, these is the <laughs> small but in who is large or small, small, in, small. A, in an absolute but value? Small in uh, in comparison with um, I mean uh, within an assemblage within a given assemblage. Okay. So small, but, 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 but uh, what and what Alice would uh, add is uh, standardization. But I don't necessarily agree. But I think it's just um, a, a, an issue of terminology again, uh, and there is an overlap between um, intention, intentionality and standardization. Standardiz standardization in, in, the, in the sense of uh, a scheme not um, metrical standardization. Okay. A, re so a recurrence, in a sense. Recurrence. Recurrence, okay. if it makes sense. So that, to clarify that the word standardization is not used using the standard statistical measure of coefficient of variation, which is uh, the mean divided by the standard deviation. That is how dispersed the population is in size. But if something happens again and again and again, in, yeah. a, in a repeated pattern. I think that's that's an important distinction to make because standardization has a clear statistical uh, and you're not implying that here. I'm still unclear. You're saying uh, retouched pieces. You're saying yeah. in your slides earlier you just showed back pieces and you were calling them microliths. Are you, are you saying microliths are backed they can be, but, but they don't have to be. But they don't have to be. They have to be retouched. They have to be retouched, but they don't have to be backed. Yeah. I don't think. Is that happen. what you're saying? Yeah, but I think most a lot of people can agree. I'm just asking you for your yeah. I'm yeah. not saying yeah. wrong. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I just want to be clear. This is, this is what I meant. Yeah. Just, I just want to be clear. Yeah. I think. Uh, so, uh, I, I think this discussion we just had here emphasizes uh, uh, the point that I wanted to make that if we want to talk about small things uh, that are backed, we should say backed or retouched versus unretouched. Because you and I have both excavated many unretouched blade-led assemblages that we would like to call microlithic. So Steve's asking these questions from Clement and they spend a lot of time together and he's still asking the same questions. <laughs> <laughs> if you had said backed or retouched every time you said microlith, we would not be having this discussion. <laughs> Well, the only discussion we'd be having is, are they retouched or not? Uh, because the qualification of that or not well, tells you what kind of discussion Because you would say it. Yep. Yes. So what the, the, the problem also with back is um, we, are, um, we are masking a m much more complex reality, I think. Because most of the things that will be simplified as, I mean, we felt as backed are not backed. They are a uh, semi-abrupt retouch, yeah. and uh, some edges which, uh, which are retouched and that are sometimes <laughs> retouched as back are actually uh, opposed to a back edge or to an after edge and are actually the cutting edge. And this is another problem. Uh, our, yeah. our, our descriptions are not accurate enough in, 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 in the one of Africa. But again, uh, backing, uh, firstly, backing is a form of retouch, and secondly, backing is originally, and I might be incorrect in this, um, that it's defined as 90 degree abrupt. So that's a metric, a more or less. A proper more or less. Yeah, but what we can do is, there is actually a method published by Double and Bernard, the exterior platform angle measurement. It has published standard deviations for the measurement. We can measure 90 degrees on backing, on retouch. If it's 90 degrees within a standard deviation of plus or minus a certain percent, it's backed. If it's 45 degree, or if it's less than that, it's not that. Okay. Uh, I don't see that thing. And that measurement can be taken in 10 seconds. Um, this is a question I want to direct to um, our Israeli colleagues, because it's about Helwan retouch. Okay. <laughs> Would you consider that to be backing in the Natufian? I will consider it to be a bifacial uh, retouch. Yeah. Uh, still semi abrupt mm -hmm. it's not backing, and I will say that it's, I will look to it, uh, Sansonetto, Lato. 
things in, in the wide area. What I mean is that if you will have only eventual leakage on the microlink, I will, and, and the other will be with fascia, still I will put it in the one family. In one family with that geometrics? One family inside the Hilwan that we call it Hilwan lunates. Yes. Because the Hilwan lunates is very distinctive. Mm -hmm. the, the, there is a little bit argument today, but it's distinctive in time because it, it uh, was found mainly in the early Natufian. Mm -hmm. Then in the late final Natufian, <coughs> units be, started to become small with abrupt or with abrupt or bigger, big, people out of it. So you have change in size and you have change in the, the way of mapping and you have change in hafting. Mm -hmm. so. Steve, do you have Helwan retouch in the Goyen? Yeah. There is Helwan retouch in the Goyen. If you ask me, I will not call it back. If this is the question. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank what about size? I'm still a little un uncertain when you say, what size does it have to be, or does it have to be? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be. Hmm? I mean, in a context where you have a great difference between small and large artifacts, you want to differentiate them. Okay. If there is no continuum, if you have a, a bimodal distribution, yes, right. you want to differentiate them. Uh, this is why I put it aside, but I, I, I skipped it. Uh, then we need to ask uh, some functional analysis if this is significant. Because if in, if in a given context you have very small things and very large things uh, used the same way, we don't need to differentiate them. But um, if you can figure that and out. This, this has to be, this has to be assemblage dependent, yeah. That's very important that you have a bimodal distribution. Yeah. But what is, it, what is that cutoff point? Are you saying that the microlinks, <coughs> which represents one of these modes, it will fit, is 30 I mean, centimeters and less? Or this is exactly the like, like like argument of saying that the, the cutoff sure. between blade and blade led uh, varies with the, with, with the context. I think so there's no something that you're highlighting very importantly is that uh, 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 when you're trying to define a, a, a whether something is microlithic or not, within an assemblage, you need to take into account your entire assemblage because then you've got products within it that have, uh, you know, a, perhaps a different chain of mm. uh, and uh, you're trying to produce something very, very specific for a certain function, and then you have another chain of next to it where it is actually a microlithic production with uh, a certain functionality uh, in in mind. If you have a con continuity, it'll be much more difficult to define a microlithic assemblage. That's but if he doesn't. Say what he's saying now in publications, and we don't know. Mm -hmm. what it's, what's yeah, that we need to. We, yeah, and and that, and it will be easier if we agree on on terms. It will it will save, you know, lines with uh, and uh, with changes every time, okay. because now we can we can we can we can reach an agreement now. But when we get back home, we get back to our old definitions. <laughs> yes, uh, for Stanley. I think that what Francois uh, told me is right. It, the Hilwan is not uh, backed retouch, but it's backed function. Yeah. You put it inside the, the half. Exactly. Uh, so yeah. I think that's this very was important. your point you're about. Yeah, there's more than one way to blunt. Exactly. Yeah. Side of those yeah. Backing of reveals an intention. Backing is, is something intentional. You're preparing something for, yeah. in theory, for, for hafting or for blunting an edge. Uh, um, which means that using a statistical definition where if it's plus or minus 90 degrees, um, there's going to be a whole category of pieces where it's a fine uh, uh, retouch um, that is uh, 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 not 90 degrees, but it still serves the same function as backing. So if you use that 90 degree uh, uh, the, the dibble uh, 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 definition, then there's a whole cat category of pieces that are functionally backed, but not statistically but according to that method. But there aren't in most assemblies. There are a good deal. Not in Eastern Africa. Not in Eastern Africa. But outside of Eastern Africa, there are certainly a, a, a number of cases <coughs> that fit into these categories. Well, I think we also need to, the, this is a topic that is particularly deficient in experimental research. I think we need to, yeah. to figure out 
is 90 degrees necessary to uh, robustly adhere a tool to a sticky substance? Or is it, does it go all the way up to here? You know, where does that, and I think only once we have that can we decide what the standard deviation around 90 degrees is. Uh, and we should base a measurement based on experimental observations mm -hmm. rather than assumptions that uh, a certain angle is more functionally efficient than any other. If the idea is the intention is to do a contact between uh, this piece and, uh, and a heart, it depends the thickness of the pieces. Mm -hmm. If it's very thick, of course, you're quite obliged to have something very abrupt to have a good fine. contact. But if it's very thin, mm -hmm. even a marginal retouch, which is not abrupt in a, in a, it has exactly the same rule or the same rule. But I'm sorry, I think that it's time to go to the Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, let's continue. It was not to, to cut the discussion, but uh, it's just to open our time. It's <laughs> open. Okay. So uh, we have Clement's uh, definition noted. Uh, we will come back to it in the afternoon again. Uh, we add it to our list. And uh, let's go to lunch. And what we'll do is we'll do lunch. It's scheduled. We're, we're, we're not adhering to the schedule. So we had an hour for lunch. So let's come back at uh, 10 to 2.